What's up guys, in today's video we are doing a full restore on the exterior of this Mastercraft. We have a lot of wet sanding, a lot of buffing and polishing, and a ceramic coating. Let's go. Guys, like always, if you get any value out of this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification, so every time I make a video, it will pop up. And like always, all of the products that we use or feature in this video will be in the description section down below. If you click those links to purchase the products, they do go to support the channel, my business, and my family, so I thank you guys for that. Okay, so I booked this job off of a Facebook video ad. I put a little video ad up um, about probably two or three weeks ago. And I booked this job, came out a couple of days ago and did my test spot on the back here. And, oh snap, on the back here, you can see our test spot. All we did was just li this little section that basically told me exactly what I needed to do on this boat. The customer saw it, he loved it, and he booked the job. So we did get the job, today's day one. Basically, we're just doing the exterior of the boat. So we're doing like the, what I would call like the tow rail up here on this section and then we're going from here to the water line so down which is going to be like the hull um i'm thinking half of this boat is actually pretty good okay so all the way until about this mastercraft area right here we should be pretty good with just compounding and buffing it and then on the back end and i'll show you right here we're going to have to do some sanding all right so right here on the back you can see it is nice and oxidized we're gonna remove these decal stickers. Um, all of these actually, they're all getting removed. And um, basically what we're gonna do is give it a nice wet sand to mow down some of this dead gel coat and oxidation. And then we're gonna bring it all back to life. Same thing with up here. We're gonna have to do a little bit of wet sanding up in these spots. Anytime you're doing wet sanding in these creases, just gotta be very careful. You don't burn through these edges when you're buffing. So it's gonna be a little bit of a tricky project, but I think it's gonna be really nice. And you can tell that the oxidation stops about right here, and then it's just nasty watermarks. So there's a lot of watermarks in this boat. Um, I'm gonna try to test out a water spot remover and see if that actually does it. If not, then we're probably just gonna buff it all off. But um, to go and waste an entire acid-based product to do the whole boat. I don't know if that's necessary, but these water spots are actually pretty bad. I don't know if you can see them in the sun. These water spots are actually pretty bad, so we're definitely gonna wanna get those off. Okay guys, so we're just gonna hop right into it. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just give it a nice little bath. I'm gonna just wash the whole exterior, get off any salt and dirt. It's been sitting out in this rock yard for um, all winter, and they're ready to put it back in for the summer. So. We're gonna give it a nice bath. We're gonna get the scum line off the bottom there and we're just gonna wash it. And then we're gonna start getting our decals off and sanding it and buffing it. So stick around. We're gonna, I'm gonna voice over through the whole process so you guys will kind of get to see my thinking process and why I do what I do. So with all that said, let's get to work. All right guys, we're gonna start off with a Dawn wash. Again, this is just to get the dirt off of the exterior surface. I did have some complications on the underside of the hull, so typically this is where I would do my acid cleaning, but I'm gonna get to that in a little bit if you didn't see me do the acid cleaning. Okay, let's hop into the decal removal. All I have here is a paint scraper, a really thin paint scraper. I'm popping off the rubber decals, pulling them off, and then we're gonna clean up the residue with lacquer thinner or acetone, either one to work. Um, for this kind of sake, when it's a lot of glue, the lacquer thinner seems to work a little better because it doesn't evaporate as fast as the acetone, but either one will work. Literally, scrape off the glue. When you're using a scraper or a razor blade on gel coat, you have to be extremely careful because you can gouge the gel coat and scratch it. Now, I was, I knew I was gonna do a considerable amount of sanding, so that's why I wasn't too scared if I was gonna scratch it, because I'll just I'll just sand them right out. But if you're not gonna do a ton of sanding and you're removing decals, just make sure you do not scratch the gel coat. Okay, as you can see, I did a wet sand first on this back half. Now, the wet sand did not work. You could see the Mastercraft showing really bad and there was a lot of ghosting. So what I decided to do was go the extra mile 
and do it by hand, a dry block sand style application. Now, all I have is the interface pad on the back of the sanding disc and I do it by hand. All you really have to do guys is keep your strokes consistent and nice. What I had to do back here is I ended up going all the way down to 400 grit on the Merca Abernet sandpaper. So I did 400 grit dry sand, 600 grit dry sand, 800 grit dry sand, and then 1000 grit dry sand. And then we did our compounding steps. Okay, so this back took a lot of work, but I was able to get all of that ghosting out and it looked really bad because the customer didn't really want to go ahead and put new decals on. So I ended up doing the dry sanding by hand so that I could really remove some deep scratches that were back here and to get that ghosting fully out. So if you wanna get that ghosting fully out from old decals, you will have to usually block sand or dry sand by hand to really dig out gel coat. Now, anytime you do that, you are just removing a ton of gel coat. So just be careful. In this case, I'm ceramic coating it. I'm, figure, I'm finishing it out perfectly. So I wasn't too concerned. <laughs> After we did our hand sand, we now step into our first compounding step, and that is going to be using Shine Supply Heavy Cut with a 1.25 pile height pad. Now, the pad does matter because it is an extra heavy cutting pad. Most brands out there are just going to sell you a compounding cutting pad. You need the extra, so it's the 1.25 pad this pad is going to give you the extra cut along with the heavy cut to remove off any crazy oxidation it got off all of these water spots really really good and easy and it scratches the living heck out of the surface because this compound i have found out it is a very aggressive uh, traditional cut it is not a diminishing abrasive compound so it's not going to break down so it cuts and cuts and cuts you will want to follow up with the second step and i'm going to go over that here in just a bit now around this mastercraft decal you can really say you have to take your time put it on a slow speed pump it around and get into those decals really good and now we're just going to move down the boat with our heavy cut Now on this machine with this type of gel coat, um, wakeboard boats are a little different than most boats. Wakeboard boats have really good, hard, nice gel coat. So you really wanna run your machine a little slower than you normally would on like bay liners and, and maybe uh, houseboats or anything like that. Most of my machine work with the heavy cut was right around 900 to about 1000 RPMs. This heavy cut really did a great job at removing the oxidation on the back and getting rid of all of those watermarks. They were really nasty. I decided not to do the chemical because it didn't really make sense. I was just going to cut them all off anyway. So we just did a really nice heavy cut on the entire exterior to get off minor scratches, all those nasty watermarks and the oxidation. And then after that, we moved on to our step two. So one thing I wanna bring up too in the buffing process is we're doing from the rub rail down to the water line. So you'll see at the bottom where the white is, that is the water line. Now we did run into some issues on this boat and I mentioned this earlier, okay? Whereas they had a crazy amount of barnacles on the bottom from, or not barnacles, but just like dried algae. Now that is due to the customer not pulling it out. So if you are a boat owner, make sure every time you pull your boat out of the lake or out of um, the ocean, wherever it is, you give your boat a nice rinse down. That is really gonna help with algae and stuff growing. In this case, it dried on there all winter. So what we did was we put muriatic acid on it and we blasted the best we could with a pressure washer to get off most of the barnacles. It did not come out perfect and the customer was okay with that because he was just parking it back in the lake to use it all summer long. So he wasn't too worried about the underside. So if you see some barnacles on on the other side that's why again guys not every time will you get these boats absolutely perfect there will be places you have to compromise buffing step number two is the yellow buff and shine medium cut wool pad and we're using shine supply chop top guys this is the first time i've ever done the heavy cut on the white and then followed it up with the yellow pad with the chop top and i honestly could not be any happier with what happened it gave it a phenomenal gloss and this yellow medium uh, cut was just paired perfectly with the shine supply chop top to remove all of the swirls and scratches that the heavy cut put in because that heavy cut really cut really aggress uh, aggressively so the chop top with the yellow wool pad came in perfect to remove all those buffing marks and guys i actually ran my pad really slow which was weird because normally on this medium cut i run it fast but on this on this mastercraft and with it being black i just ran it at like 1200 rpms did really slow arm speed and really worked in that chop top and the finish was absolutely un 
real. And then all we did after that was follow up with our polishing, quickly polishing up with our polish, and it literally left a perfect finish. Now, as you could tell in the back, we had to get a little creative around that bar and stuff. Now, there was little areas back there where we totally could not hit without removing the bar in the hardware. But when we looked into the engine room, it was just way too much work to get it out. I had to unplug some wires and stuff. So we just didn't worry about it. And then we, I actually talked to the customer, told him about it, and he honestly was like, hey man, the boat looks a thousand times better. If there's a little here and there, a little scuff mark here and there that you couldn't get out because of the hardware, that's fine. So have that have that communication with your customers, guys. This is the reason why I'm saying that, all right? So here's step three. With the polishing pad, we're using a Lake Country orange polishing foam pad on the Rupes Milli using the chop top. So there is no need for the third compound, all right? So all we used, we did this entire boat with two products. We did heavy cut and then we used chop top for the medium cut and we used it as our finishing polish and it left the surface absolutely perfect, literally mirror finish. Anytime you're, you're doing that finishing, that last, you know, you really wanna get it shined up, on black run it just a tad bit slower i literally had my machine on the two speed setting so if you have a rupes milli i had it on the two setting and i just worked in that chop top and that chop top melted down perfectly into a really nice finishing polish honestly guys it was, it was i was blown away at the results of this boat Well guys, that is it for day one. We are a wrap. I got pretty much the entire exterior done besides this section back. And the reason why I stopped is because my pad was getting dirty and I don't feel like cleaning it because I'm ready to go home. So what I'm gonna do is come back tomorrow with a fresh pad, finish that little top gunnel section, wash the whole boat and ceramic coated. I'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to day two of this project. We're gonna wrap it up today, hopefully. It is actually cold today. We had a little cold front come through. So that'll be real fun to ceramic coat in. I just love ceramic coating in the cold. Not really being, uh, what is that, sarcastic. All we really have left to do is finish kind of the back area right here. We gotta do the name right here and then finish polishing up the back. And then we're gonna do a deep clean, wash the entire boat, get it all completely washed, probably clean the inside a little bit. Um, he's not necessarily paying to get the interior detailed. We're gonna go ahead and get it all super detailed and clean And then we're just gonna go ahead ceramic coat it put all the final touches on it and call it a day Well, let's hop in the day two. Let's go Day two, we're gonna finish up the back. All I had to do with this top strip and a little bit down where the Mastercraft was, touch up some areas, and then we just got to our detailing and ceramic coating. So go ahead, make sure the boat is absolutely flawless at this point, and then go to cleaning on the inside. On the inside, like I said earlier, the customer actually didn't pay to have any of the detail uh, done on the interior. It was an exterior only job, but you make such a mess doing the outside that you can't remember, you're gonna have to clean the inside. So anytime a customer calls you and says, hey man, I just want the outside done, just know that you will have to do the inside. So make sure you charge accordingly. Okay, all I did here was just a basic Dawn wash, cleaned up the inside. He really wasn't even worried about getting a wax or anything. So we didn't even worry about that. We just cleaned it out really nice i got all those carpets out we cleaned the seat cushions another thing on this particular boat all the seat cushions were brand new he just got it all reupholstered that's why the the seat cushions look amazing so i really didn't even have to clean those very much all we did was just a basic bath on the inside now the outside we did our traditional dawn wash to get off any of the oils any lubricants or anything like that in the compounds before we do the ceramic coating this is a step you want to do before ceramic coating or waxing so even if you're going to wax or just seal your boat you always want to clear out the pores make sure there's no lubricants or anything in those pores so that you're actually sealing up the gel coat and not a bunch of oil and stuff that's stuck in it Always make sure you dry your boat. Hey, a key product that I've been loving, Shine Supply has a water spot remover. 
It's basically a cleaning product that you just wipe on in your drying process. And if you do get water marks in your drying process, this will actually take it right out. And I found it actually handy because the sun was coming in and out and we did have a little bit of dry water. So all I did was to take this water spout remover as my drying agent and it wiped away those water marks perfectly. Now we're hopping into the, the, the coating process, all right? A lot of people take a ton of time on coatings, guys, and you, it's really unnecessary. A lot of people think coatings have to take two, three, four days. That's not the case. I literally banged out the entire exterior of this boat in about 45 minutes by myself, okay? And the way that worked is my coating process. So I literally coat about a five or six foot section. As you can see, I let it sit for about a minute right when it would flash. You know, it was nice and sunny and bright by this point. It would flash in about 30 seconds to a minute and then I'd go in and level it. That is it. Super easy coating to apply, super easy coating to a level, and it's only a one step coating. That's the best thing about it, man. They're not trying to tell you a base coat and a top coat. They're not telling you you gotta put three and four coats on to make it five years. It's a realistic 12 month coating. You put it on the boat's going to be for 12 months it's that simple they make um you know some um what is it like maintenance products or punch it that goes on top of an sio2 spray that you want to top it with maybe once twice a month that would help it but this coating was really solid super simple super easy and like i said guys coatings don't have to be this super crazy intense thing i literally coated this boat in the same amount of time that it would have taken me to wax it and seal it and that's why i'm kind of moving towards pretty much ceramic coating every boat that i do because it does cost me a little bit more product but the customer gets so much more value out of it and it literally takes me the exact same time so Sure, it costs me a little more, but I'm already charging premium for my services, so I work it into the bill. It's gonna take you about the same amount of time to coat a boat as it would to seal it. So that's why I'm kind of moving more in the direction of pretty much coating every boat that I do from now on. As you can see too, I did the back area, this little swim platform. I cleaned up the sea deck and then put a nice little coating on there. Wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that for the whole interior because it ain't gonna last very long, but it was just a nice little extra touch I did. As for the coating, just use your applicator pad, apply it. You know, you're gonna have to uh, decipher how long that cure time is. So sometimes it may take longer. Go watch some of my other ceramic coating videos if you wanna learn about how to, you know, how to apply it properly. This isn't necessarily that video. I just wanted to show you guys how simple and easy you can apply these coatings. You, you apply them, you wait, you level them, move on with your life. All right, so once the coating was done on the outside, I hopped on the interior and just gave it a nice detailed clean. Like I said, I took the water spout remover spray, went ahead and cleaned that all up with that. You can see it, I did the glass, got off the light water marks. This is not a spray for heavy water marks. So if you're trying to remove like heavy etched water marks, this isn't the product for it. This is just gonna remove light stuff. I went ahead and vacuumed up the carpets real good. I did pressure wash them off. I didn't get that on camera, unfortunately, so I, I do apologize for that. But I pressure washed them off real good and just vacuumed them out, put them back in the boat, made sure the floor was all dry, did my final wipe down, and that was pretty much it for the interior of this boat. Guys, at this point, you were practically finished with your detail. So we did all of our sanding steps, all of our compounding steps. This job took me roughly about 13 hours from start to finish on the end of the detail on everything I do. I clean the trailer, put some tire shine on, you know, make sure the trailer is nice and presentable. And then we are officially done. Well guys, that is it for today's video. Great job. The customer was amazing. Um, the whole experience was great. The boat looks absolutely amazing. The back came out way better than I thought it would. So guys, like always, if you get any value out of this video, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification. So every time we make a video, it will pop up and I will see you guys on our next video. Let's go.